So the next thing we're going to do with sequences is actually add the terms together. Uh, something we call a sum or summation. Okay, so I've got a couple examples here and we'll take them one at a time. In the first one, uh, this one is the one where we had uh, the, the perfect squares as the terms. Um, but I'm only going to add the first five of them together. Now we could just add them up, right? Uh, 1 and 9 is 10, 4 and 16 is another 20. So that'd be uh, what 30 total, and then 25 that makes that 55 total. But um, I'm not so worried about being able to add them up. So if I had 100 terms there, I'm not going to want to sit there and just add them all together. And so what I'm going to do instead is come up with a notation, a shorthand way of writing this. We said uh, in the last video that this was n squared. Each of these terms was n squared where n was the position number going down the line. And so what we're going to do is we're going to write this as a summation uh, in something called summation notation. Now the notation we're going to use incorporates this Greek letter S or sub, sigma, sorry, not S. It's kind of like S, um, but it's a sigma and stands for sum and then we're going to write the first term, the position of the first term goes on the bottom um, and we're going to call those k values. The positions are going to be k's when we deal with sums and n's when we deal with sequences but really the k's and the n's are the same. So this is a k value that starts at 1, that's the position, and goes up to 5, so 5 goes on the top. Okay, so the 1 to 5, those are the position numbers in the sequence. And then uh, next to the sum, we write out the expression that defines this pattern. In our case, it would be k squared, the position squared. Okay. And so there's our summation notation for that sequence. And then obviously we just said if you were to add those up you would get what I say 55. Now interestingly for many of these there's going to be a special formula like there's a formula for k squared the sum of k squared so the sum of the uh, perfect squares has a, an actual formula that you can use to calculate this especially useful when you have lots of terms. In this next example, again, I'm just going to throw this in summation notation. And to do that, uh, I need my sigma and then my k equals first position to, now there's four of them here, four terms. So we just want the fourth one. k equals one to four. And then the expression I would use, just like I did before with n's, this time with k's, is going to be the k value on top and then k plus 1 because remember the bottom was one bigger than the top. Okay. And now if I really wanted to solve this or, or evaluate it, I'd have to get common denominators here and then um, you know add up the numerators. It, it gets to be quite a process when there's a bunch of fractions and all their denominators are different. Um, but again, some of these will have some nice formulas to be able to work with. In this next one, I have a bunch of fours. It's all the same term. One, two, three, four, five, six fours. And so in my summation notation, I know the first term is one. The last term is six because there's six of them. The thing that we are adding together is just a four. And so we put the constant right in the sum. Okay. All right. Now, um, let's go the other way around. Let me give you a couple summation notations and see if, you know, we'll see if we can come up with the actual numbers that we're adding together. So let's say something like the sum k equals 1 to 5 of, uh, let's go with k factorial over 2 to the k. That's a tricky one. There's a lot there. And so I 
notice right away with my summation notation, I have the, I'm starting at one, term one, and ending at five. So there are going to be five total terms. You can see on my fingers there, five total terms. Uh, each one has the position number factorial over two to the position number. So it'd be one factorial over two to the one, followed by two factorial over two to the two, followed by three factorial over th two to the three, then four factorial over two to the four, and finally I need a fifth one, five factorial over two to the five. Okay. Now when I add these up, uh, one factorial is one, two factorial is two, two times one. Oh, it's not two factorial, that's two to the one power, my bad. There it is. Uh, two factorial is two, two to the two power is four, three factorial is three times two times one is six, two to the third is eight, and then four factorial is basically six times four, it's the previous one times the new number, four, uh, be 24. And two to the fourth is the previous number doubled, so it'd be 16 on the bottom. And then five factorial is this previous number times five, which is 120. And two to the fifth is the previous number doubled, which would be 32. All right. So that's how we're going to um, derive that. And then we could obviously continue by getting an LCD and, and working this out. I just really want to get you guys in the habit of understanding what the notation is and being able to plug the correct things in the correct places. Okay. Um, finally now, in this section, there are some properties of summations or sequences that I think you guys are going to really need. And I'm going to just put them on the camera here. They're on page 645 in your book. There's two boxes here, and they're very important properties. This first one is when you have, when you're combining different terms and then adding those combinations together. So for instance, if you had two different sequences that you were adding together, you could just uh, add the sum separately. Same thing for subtraction and some other stuff in there. This is uh, multiplying by a constant. The formulas for sums of sequences on the bottom here I think is really fascinating because uh, a couple of these we just saw actually. Let me see if I can scoot this around so you can see what I'm talking about. The first formula, I don't know if you can even zoom in, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, the sum of C, C is a constant, is just a whole bunch of C's added together n times because n is the position number. So it's n times C, right? If you add the same thing to itself n times, it's n times that thing. So that would make sense for what we just did down here on this um, example with all the fours. Using my formula, I have a constant, I have an n value of 6, and so my answer must be the constant times the n value of 6. It would be 4 times 6 is 24. right? And that makes sense if you added 6 4s together, you're going to get 24. Okay. Um, another one we did a moment ago involved the k squared. Okay. Let's look at this, the k squared formula here. Um, I'm going to write the k squared formula down because I don't know that you can see it that clearly and I don't want to change all my zooming. All right, so I have the sum of k squared. Two doesn't look too good. k equals one. The one I did went to five. Well, I guess I should put an n there. To n is going to be uh, n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 
all over 6. That seems like a really weird formula, but it's going to give us a value of 55 when I put the uh, n value of 5 in. And I'll show you how that works. So, in this particular case, the one I did before goes up to 5, an n value of 5. So let's assume that, right? Let's do sum k equal 1 to 5 of k squared. Well, that's going to be 5 times, now 5 plus 1 is 6. 2 times 5 is 10 plus 1 is 11. And then I got the 6 on the bottom. Well, in this case, I can cancel out the 6s. And I get 5 times 11, which is 55, which just happens to be the number we got before by straight up adding. That formula will work no matter how far out I take those squares, as long as I'm adding consecutive squares together. All right. Again, the formulas in your book um, are going to be quite useful, both of these sets of formulas um, or properties on page 645. Uh, finally, I'll just do one quick example where you can use those properties. Um, something like evaluating uh, something like the sum k equals 1 to 26 of 3k minus 7. Now, you might be thinking that's a lot of terms to write out, right? 1 to 26. And it would be if that's how we solved this. Uh, and it would work, it's just going to be a lot of terms. 26 things to add together and i got to find all those things. Instead, I'm going to use a combination of the properties that I just looked at. In fact, I'm going to maybe zoom in a little bit here so we can see those properties. And one property in particular that I like for this is the difference. If you have a difference inside the sum, then you can split the sum between them. And that's what we have here, right? So we have a difference inside the sum, so I can split the sum, k equal 1 to 26 of 3k minus the sum k equal 1 to 26 of just 7, right? That's what uh, property number 3 says we can do. Right here I have 3 times a uh, sequence, 3 times a, a variable, and according to property number 1, which I'm not going to show you right now, but I could if I wanted to, um, Property number one basically says that that constant can come outside. So this becomes 3 times the sum k equal 1 to 26 of k minus the sum k equal 1 to 26 of 7. Okay. All right. Now there's a formula for the sum of just the k value. Just That would just be adding up 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 all the way up to 26. And the formula for that, right here, sum of k, is n times n plus 1 over 2. So let me do that. Let's fill that in. So it is 3 times, now this becomes n times n plus 1 all over 2. That's my formula. That gives me this sum of k's. Now the sum of the 7 here, remember 7 is a constant, and when we did the constant just a moment ago, where was it? Uh, oh, right up here. When we did the constant 4 a moment ago, you just multiply the n times the constant to get the 24. So we'll do that here. It's just 26 times 7. And so the n value is the 26, so I want to plug that in. I get 3 times 26 times 27 all over 2, right? 
26, n plus 1 is 27. Then I subtract whatever 26 times 7 is. Uh, what's that? 182. So let me do a little bit of simplifying here. 26 over 2 is 13. 3 times 13 times 27. I got my calculator on the side. I'm punching these in. Is 1053. And then I subtract off the 182, and I should get a value of 871.